Welcome back to the Audiobook Creation Exchange's course in home narration. I'm John McElroy. Okay, I lied. That consolidated audio file we just created, it isn't really finished audio. But it's as finished as you're likely to make it. That brings us to a truly unfamiliar concept, mastering. Put simply, mastering allows you to improve the overall sound of a recording. That's all it is, really. But the devil's in the details, and mastering is a maze of processors and settings. I can't teach you about this topic in a 10-minute video. It's way too complex. But you do need to know about tools commonly used in spoken word production and how they work to improve audio quality. At some point, you may want to consult with an audio pro to help you perfect your home recordings. You'll find a whole complement of mastering processors in the audio suite menu in Pro Tools. Experiment with them if you have a chance. Just from looking at this audio, I can tell that it's dynamic. Loud sections here, where the waveform is fat, soft over here where it's not. In fact, it's too dynamic, and I have to fix it. Imagine that you're listening to this on your desktop computer. You set the volume to hear the loud parts. But as soon as you reach these soft areas, you can't hear the narration. So you adjust the dial. Then the loud parts come back, and the volume's too loud, and you have to dial it down. Back and forth, up and down. It's a bad listening experience that can only be helped with a processor called a compressor. A compressor works like an automatic volume adjuster. It squeezes the loud parts down so they're more in line with the soft ones. It's as if someone were riding the volume dial to maintain steady levels. Here's the original track in blue. Here's the processed track in green. See that? The levels are now more uniform. But I've created other problems. Yes, the hot levels are tamed, but that makes the softest material in the recording too accessible. Remember the noise floor that I mentioned in the first lesson? The ambience in the recording space? This wasn't recorded in a perfectly controlled environment, so that sound of air moving around is a little too high, so I'll filter out some of it with equalization, called EQ for short. Normally, EQ is the first line of processing in spoken word recording, but for reasons you'll understand in a moment, I'm doing it now. Here's the original track and the compressed audio track. Here's the filtered track. You can't see the difference here, and over the internet, you probably can't even hear it. And that's why I didn't show you this first. But trust me, it sounds better. I stripped out the low-frequency rumble and high-frequency airiness that marks a lot of amateur recordings. But it still sounds a little thin. And frankly, the background ambience is still too noisy. Let's deal with the thinness first and fatten up the recording with a special kind of compressor called a limiter. A normal compressor gently squeezes a signal and smooths it. A limiter sets an absolute ceiling on how much signal gets through. We've already done the squeezing. Now we want to raise the loudest levels of the recording to that ceiling without distorting the signal while boosting the other levels proportionately. Here are the original, compressed, and EQ'd tracks. Here's the limited track in red. It's not a subtle difference. The transients, those individual parts of the waveform, are broader and therefore louder. Limiting lends more presence to the voice, and that makes the recording more engaging. As I said, you can't absorb mastering techniques in a short video. There are too many settings and concepts to grasp. My suggestion, hire an audio engineer to set up templates just for you. After all, you'll be using the same equipment in the same place with the same voice every time you record. Ask your pro audio source for suggestions. Now, let's move on to the final lesson, the elements of successful narration.